That's why I need this test of stuff always. Because making a mistake is super easy to do. So, fantastic. This one will be able to shove there. And there we go. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna cover our first type of puzzles, which is gonna be how can we use rocks in order to push some switches that will create or make appear something like in this case, we're gonna create a bridge. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna need to create the events that we're gonna use in order to make this work. So that means that we're gonna have first a rock, which I'm gonna call rock one. Um, let's go pick the image somewhere. Can't recall where it is. Where is that? Other? There we go. Okay. So same as director, trigger is gonna be on player touch. We're gonna set movement route of this event uh, away from the player. Where is it? move away from the player we're also gonna play a sound effect with this which i feel like heart three is always good yeah that's perfect we're gonna wait for completion skip if cannot move and that's it we have our fantastic rock we're gonna need to create a second one right over here which i'm gonna call rock two beautiful all right so our rocks are created next thing we're gonna need is some switches so Switch one. I'm gonna go inside. Um, switch. There we go. Oh, that's sci fi. Wait, that's not good. Okay, there we go. This one is perfect. Amazing. I'm gonna create a new page with this where the this is pressed. The self switch A. Beautiful. Um, I'm gonna make him make it below character. Make sure that you put this through. Trigger is gonna be parallel for, for both pages second page doesn't has to be through though so that's good let's just leave it as and that's it for switch one i'm gonna use switch two over here and switch three which is gonna be right there all right and finally we're gonna have also uh, a puzzle manager the top left corner which is gonna be parallel and it's gonna handle a lot of stuff so all right. Now, the thing that is going to do basically this puzzle is that our player need to figure out a way to push both rocks on either of those switches. Doesn't matter which one. And the player was also going to need to stand on a switch, which is going to create a bridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our bridge over here. Uh, first page is going to be empty. Second one is if a variable. Um, Let's go with change the maximum to 40 air. And let's call it bridge puzzle. Is bigger or equal to three? Whoops. Okay. The image now is going to be somewhere inside the tile set. So let's use this over here. And it's going to be parallel. So when the bridge is going to appear, what we're going to do is that we're going to play an animation on this event. Uh, I think we have some kind of flash inside yeah there we go i'm gonna play this wait for completion and we're also going to activate the self switch a copy paste this now this is gonna well actually let's clear that it's gonna be faster this way let's go with tile set b all right there we go so everything's in place here except for the self switch cool now what's gonna happen is that whenever a switch is pressed it's gonna increase the value of the puzzle and once the puzzle value is three or bigger, it's always going to be three maximum in this case, but whatever. Then the bridge is going to appear. It's going to play a flash animation and the player is going to be able to walk on it in order to press forward and whatever he is standing here. Sounds like some kind of water dungeon in this case. Doesn't matter really where they are. You can implement this wherever you feel like inside your games. All right. So moving on now. What we're going to need to do first is implement the puzzle manager because without it, our puzzle cannot exist. The first thing you will need to do is to activate the switch is game started so that it will trigger our game manager. 
So we'll be able to fetch information from arrow X and arrow Y where the player is currently standing. Now, if you have no clue what I'm talking about here, you can always go check my game manager tutorial inside my channel. That will explain everything you need to know in order to be able to make that puzzle work. Now, moving on with the next variable that the puzzle manager is going to need to handle, we're going to call it rock1 x. We're going to have rock1 y. And we're going to need to do this for every single rock and puzzles. Um, I'm sorry, every single rock and every single switch are for puzzles. So let me just do that real quick and fast forward. All right, so we have our three switches. We also have our two rocks. Now, what we're going to need to do next is that we're going to need to assign the game data of all those events inside the proper variables. That means that for rock one X, we're going to go inside character, rock one, map position X, and we're going to click on OK. Now we're going to need to do this for rock one Y, which is going to be position Y of rock one and so on and so forth for every single event. Now, make sure that you triple check every single of those values while you're implementing those, because it's very easy to make a mistake here, and that's gonna break the puzzle and not make it work entirely. So triple check that the current variables are assigned to the correct events. Other than that, let me fast forward so we can move on with this. All right, there we go. So we have every single of our events for this puzzle put inside the correct variables. Now, that's a lot of variables, some of you may say. I totally agree with you. But there's two things that you need to know about this. First, maximum of variables for RPG Maker MZ is 5,000. I highly doubt you will need 5,000 variables to create your game. If you do, man, you're using the wrong tool. And even if you need more than 5,000, well, there are still plugins out there that allows you to bypass that chap so you can create 20,000 if you ever feel like it. But honestly, I've created massive open worlds with RPG Maker in the past with tons of puzzle. And I feel like my record of variables was something around 500 for a project. So don't stress too much over it. Now, the second thing that you need to know is that these variables can be reused on different maps for the same exact puzzle. That means that you can have multiple times this puzzle using rocks to press switches. Of course, use a different layout, so the logic is not the exact same. But you can reassign the same variables for the rock 1 and the rock 2 because it won't matter. The puzzle manager will always take care of assigning the correct value once the player is on that map. So if your puzzle is on another map, it won't interfere with one another. So you can always reuse those variables on other maps for the same exact thing. All right, we are done set up in the puzzle manager. And the only thing left to do is to implement the switch logic, which we're going to do. But right before that, if you can make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, that will be awesome. All right, moving on with the good stuff now, which is the switches, of course. Now, this is the most complicated part to do right for this puzzle. So I'll try to do it as slowly as possible so that I'm not losing anybody at home. The first thing you're going to need to do is, of course, well, how does the switch get activated? Of course, there's three possibilities here. For the rock one is standing on the switch, so it's going to activate it. The rock two is standing on the switch, so it's going to activate it. Or the hero is standing on the switch, and it's going to activate it. Now, the same logic applies for all three switches. That means that once we've coded one of those switches, we can copy-paste this exact same code, and it should work for all those switches as well, or almost. Now, here's the thing. How, do we, how can we know that a character or a rock is standing? Well, of course, we're going to use the variables we just created inside the puzzle manager, but also inside our game manager, which has the information for our hero X position. So let's start with this. So if the hero X position equals the switch one position that we have over here, so this switch, inside that if, we also need to confirm that the Y position is good as well. So if the Y position of the hero 
equals the one of the switch one so switch one y then the player at this point is standing on the switch and so what we're gonna do is of course we're gonna play a little sound effect for the switch so let's go with switch tree which is my favorite for this one wow that was loud. sorry so yeah that makes sense. that's a good noise i like it now self switch uh, there we go activated and of course the most important thing to do here that we don't want to forget is that we need to increment our bridge puzzle value by one when we do this otherwise the bridge is never going to appear so now one switch is pressed which means that we're increasing the bridge puzzle value by one and when all three switches will be pressed that means that the bridge puzzle value will be at three and if you remember correctly then this is when the bridge was going to appear awesome now we need to do the exact same thing for the rocks as well but first let me just show you as what it's going to look like so tiny bit we also going to have a problem here see that the switch is already pressing once we launch the game does anybody here knows why well, I'm going to tell you why. We're starting here inside a new game. That means that when we start a game, every single variable, as you know, are initiated to the value 0. And we're also launching the switch 1 by conditions before the, uh, the puzzle manager has any time to run. So the puzzle manager doesn't have the time to assign all the values correctly that the switch here in parallel already checks for if the condition is respected. And of course it's respected, because in this case, the arrow X, arrow Y, switch 1 and uh, X and switch 1 Y are all value 0. And so how can we solve that? It's super simple. All you have to do is implement wait one frame. So in one frame, the puzzle manager has the time to assign every single variable's values correctly. And then the switches are going to try to check if the logic is correct. And just by doing this, we're going to solve the first problem we get. First, all right, so now the switch isn't pressed until the player step on it. But what happens when the player doesn't step on it? Nothing, which is bad. Because in this case, what I want for this puzzle is that if the player is not standing on it, well, the switch does not like go up again because it makes no sense otherwise to have rocks to, pr to push on the switches if the character can just activate all three switches and have the bridge up here anyway. So we're also going to need to implement the logic in over here, which is why it's still inside parallel, that if the character player is not standing on the switch anymore, then we need to go back on page one. That's what we're going to do. So how do we do this? It's once again, it's quite simple. First, we're going to need a new switch variable. So this is going to be, we're going to call it deactivate switch. And at the very beginning of the page, the value is going to be on. Now at the end of our event page, we're going to check if the value of deactivate switch is on still. And if it is, then we're going to deactivate the switch. So in this case, let's go with switch two. We're switch to 45. All right. So the switch that deactivated, we're going to turn off the self switch. And of course, do not forget to subtract the value one from the bridge puzzle. All right. But now, of course, the switch is always going to get deactivated. We need to implement the logic that's going to turn off the deactivate switch if some conditions are respected like if the hero the rock one or the rock two are standing still on that switch so the exact same thing here so what we do is we copy paste that little block here over there then delete this and if the hero is standing still on the switch then of course we're gonna put the variable deactivate switch to off because as long as it's standing, or the, any rock will be standing, then we don't want to deactivate the switch. Makes sense, right? Okay. So now let's test this. So, player walks on the switch, and if he's not standing on it anymore, then it gets deactivated. Awesome! 
Now, the only thing we need to do really here is to implement the exact same logic for the rocks itself. So we're going to copy paste this block once again, and we're simply going to use the rock 1x is equal to switch 1x. And is the rock 1y is equal to the switch 1y, in which case we're going to activate the exact same thing as if the player was standing on it, except that it's the rock 1. And the rock 1 is this one over here. So let's try also to have the same thing to deactivate. So let me copy paste this once again. Gonna delete this, deactivate the switch, and let's try to push the rock on the switch. Fantastic, and if I remove it, of course it won't be possible inside the game, but I just wanna test my code. It works, awesome. Now, something to remember is that make sure that the option through is selected for the switch. If you do not click on the through option, what's going to happen when you try to push your rock on the switch is that it's going to get jammed. Because events cannot go on the other light on top of other events unless one of those are through. And if the rock is through, then it will be possible for the player to push it, which only leaves the option to have the switch through. All right, you all with me? Perfect. So that's all I'll set, guys. We're almost done. So all we need to do is have the exact same thing for the rock 2 in this case. So the rock 2x, rock 2y, and we're going to copy paste this over here. Let's trash all the good stuff. Deactivate the switch off. We're good for the second rock. And so everything is in place here. And the only thing we need to do is implement the exact same code that we did over here on the other switch, except that, wait a minute, be careful here. It needs not to equal to switch 1x anymore. In this case, it needs to be equal to the switch 2x. And so all you need to do is to adjust this little, these little values over here. And let me fast forward this for you. So then you'll be able to see the final results. All right, feels like everything is in place here and let's all we have to do is to test it all out. So let's try this. So I'm just gonna test the pause entirely here. Let's just try to not screw this up. I will look at that. My puzzle does not even work without cheating. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, beautiful. Good job, me. All right, let's do this this way. Let's try again, shall we? That's why I need this test of stuff always. Because making a mistake is super easy to do. So, fantastic. This one will be able to shove there. And there we go. And even though the switch gets deactivated and the values reduced to two, this the bridge still remain up here because, as you remember, once the condition here is respected, it's a parallel process. It's, it should almost be an auto-run process at this stage, where we're simply going to turn the self-switch A, which is not dependent anymore from the variable of being equal to 3. So once it gets turned on, it stays that way. And all it does is that it plays the event then. And that's it. All right, so that's already it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe for more content. If you have any questions or comments on this, please make sure to leave them below inside the comment section. And as always, I'll see you later for a new video. Bye.